What's up guys, it's Real T Dragon here, and it's been three years since the last Metroid game has been released, and that was Metroid Samus Returns, which was a remake of Metroid 2. So it's been a minute, Metroid Dread has come and gone. And come back again. And I kind of want to tell you that story because I think it's important and it's something fun to look at today. I kind of did some researching while I was on the web. And you know, I'm pretty excited for Metroid Dread, being a fan of all these years, Super Metroid is like my favorite game. I got a Metroid t-shirt on. I connect a lot with Samus. <laughs> She's pretty. <laughs> pretty badass. I wanna give a big blessing and thank you to the almighty Nintendo creators out there. Yoshio Sakamoto and of course, Miyamoto. You know, everything depends on him. If he doesn't like a certain aspect of a game, it's not gonna come out. But thankfully, Metroid Dread is coming out, and I believe that it has a chance to revive this franchise from its long, long. <laughs> so, Metroid is a story about Samus Aran being raised by Chozo people, which are bird like beings, and then becoming a space bounty hunter, learning their ways and superpowers, etc gears and technology and she finds something called a metroid which is a symbiotic being that kind of connects and uh, eats the energy of people around it that can evolve in lots of different ways and so with the relationship with metroid samus Aarons destroys them because they're too powerful aspects of them come back you know, whether it's a gene or it's a copy or a duplicate of Samus Aran herself. And so after going out, killing all the Metroids, coming back again, going back out to kill some more Metroids thing, coming back again, making sure they're extinct. Oh shit, they got in the space station. Okay, let's kill everything in the best space station. <laughs> let's go out again. And coming back, finally, we are at Metroid. Dread. And so being at Metro Dread now, the basic plot without spoiling too much of it, which is of course a fun dungeon crawling, creepy sci-fi game inspired by Alien. Samus got a video feed or something and now she's back as ZDR to kill more Metroids, maybe the last of the Metroids. One thing I want to note about the timeline of Metro Dread outside of the video game is that with the actual game release, this is back there whenever Metroid Prime 2 came out, Echoes. During that time, there was a sneak teaser of what Dread is, but it didn't release. In fact, they worked on it for a little bit and then it got canceled, thus leading us all the way to now which is 2021 where we were all surprised by Metro Dread like a month ago and it's about to release next month, October 8th, 2021. For 15 years. Do I need to like keep saying what's wrong with Metroid? Like Metroid goes on these decade long wait times before the next game. By the way, this is Future Thin here. Metroid Samus Returns does not count. It's a remake, okay? I know some of you guys are gonna say that. I'm sorry, it's a remake. And they kind of put fillers in the middle that are terrible but hey you can't say that other nintendo franchises haven't done the same thing i know legend of zelda has had arching games mario has every single type of game out there from racing to tennis to golf and people do play and like it so i can't hate on them for trying something with metroid right unless they give up on the franchise that is which it felt like they did for so long before mercury stream came up in made Samus Returns. Yoshio Sakamoto was one of the heads, basically one of the creators of Metroid at Nintendo, and he mentioned that the game existed back then in 2005, 2006-ish. They gave up like right before the game came out. They just pulled the plug. Nintendo was like, this isn't working, and it never came out, which is probably a good thing, like if it wasn't that good, because we probably could have just saw the death of the <laughs> Metroid franchise even faster. Man, Metroid Other M, that's a game. We're talking about it later in this video video but that such a big blow to metroid you know fans and just its longevity as a franchise it really gave it a good punch in fact it's saying it was official that the dream died you know may 2010 ish there was the 75th episode of ign's nintendo voice chat and somebody named harris talked about how the metro dread game finally got plug pulled and it was stopped for development right when the game was almost finished. They said, you can always bring it back though. And they did. But you have to question, what is 15 years of development hell? And what does it look like? 
Unfortunately, we don't really know or have that information uh, because Nintendo really keeps a lot of its things under wraps, especially projects that aren't beta stages, right? And so I think it's interesting that we don't have Metroid Dread. Is there a leak? I don't know, man. Metroid Dread. I'm looking it up right here too. There's like no visual or audible or videos what Metroid Dread was back in 2005, 2006-ish. So that's really sad that it's barely documented. I'm pretty sure the 2005, 2006 version of Metroid Dread was just scrapped too, even though it was almost finished. I don't know if that file will ever release or that game will ever release in that state. We never really got to see it too, which I'm sad about because it would have been so good to like see and compare because I know that whenever they start with this new Metroid Dread, it was just fresh start and they just went straight into it you know they didn't waste too much time they didn't go back and use any of the source code from the old games either but hey if you got a tip and you can find something from metro dread from 2005 2006 ish tweet me let me know about it because maybe i can include it in a future video now we talk about it, metroid m and the game that really destroyed metroid for at least a couple years until Samus Returns came out. This game was so bad. Metroid Other M is just a game that people have so many problems with, whether it's like the character development, the terrible voice acting. Yo, Samus Aran is out here in this video game asking for so much help and relying on other people when every other game before this had Samus just being independent, taking over a whole planet by herself, killing thousands massacring hundreds of creatures and monsters like come on you took a character that was so pretty she's a bounty hunter dang it this game also sold so bad so terrible it let the sour taste in miyamoto's mouth because from then on that was in 2010 when that came out metroid other m no i will not include federation force that does not count okay until now where you know we're finally getting metroid to be back in the limelight to be talked about in a positive way kind of hitting me man it took 11 years for people to chill out on hating other m so people could forget it so nintendo could be like okay let's go back to it now that there's no bad press about how bad this game is and how much it didn't make sales. Maybe Nintendo is just trying its best and the fan base itself is what's making the franchise suffer. I don't think so though. But maybe Nintendo is right and they should have just waited because if they made another game and it was bad, it was just the end for Metroid and they just lost a whole franchise. They spent millions of dollars in every year. Metroid fan base, is it toxic? I think it's funny how Metroidvania type games are always referred to and how Metroid started that type of game. So if anything, the fan base has spread out to go to other creators that make games in the style of Metroid so they can have fun with that kind of feeling at playing a video game, right? And the fans definitely do mention how much they hate Other M, Federation Force, and other flaws that are in the Metroid games. By the way, if you didn't know what a Metroidvania game type is, it's basically a Metroid slash Castlevania inspired dungeon crawl where you can collect items, build your characters, and face challenging puzzle solving dungeon. Big butt! I think the Metroid fan base is really good about loving and supporting everything Metroid. As far as like actually voicing their opinions, how bad they want a new Metroid game, how hype we are for these characters. Like whenever Ridley came out on Super Smash Bros as a playable character, oh my gosh, I knew the whole fan base of Metroid was just going crazy and happy about it and it didn't seem negative. And so I, I like to think that the Metroid fan base is pretty positive that they didn't really ruin the series, but I can understand Nintendo's standpoint of wanting some of the flame to relax from their last bad Metroid game. And they just needed a guarantee of good sales for this forthcoming series. Because honestly, when Metroid Samus Returns came out, I think they were expecting not that much to happen, but there was such a big reaction from the fans over a long period of time, by the way, because 
when it first came out, it didn't even sell a million units. By now, I'm sure it has, but that was back on the 3DS too, whenever that game came out. So that kind of rekindled the fire. It kind of birthed the relationship of Nintendo and Mercury Stream to where it is now. And hopefully they work on the next Metroid game as well. Actually, Mercury Streams are actual fans of the series too and so that's why when samus returns came out it was so good because they kind of knew what they liked about the old games and they brought it back i mean it kind of helps that it's a remake so it's easier but that was a good beta test for nintendo to see oh look at this company they're fans they know what they want and let's give them a lot of trust to develop the game and if it does a good job then we'll make maybe a next one who knows probably not metroid samus returns came out i remember i bought that on the 3ds and it broke records as far as what other m did to the franchise and it actually was a big thumbs up people love this new way they're adapting 2d and 3d metroid into one which was explored through that video game but it stayed true to the origins of the 2d metroidvania type genre so yeah fans have probably made metroid better <laughs> i think you could argue that but now you might be asking what is mercury stream who are these guys and why are they working on metroid right now it's a story for this company started in 2015 when nintendo found them mercury stream and were like we need you to make a metroid prototype for Wii U or the 3DS. And they were like, dude, got you, we're gonna work on it. You know, they offered to make a remake of Metroid Fusion, maybe just to learn how to do everything and, and make all the aspects that makes Metroid Metroidvania, right? But they wanted to do it right, so Metroid Fusion could have been a, a dummy for them to practice on, since this is like their first collaboration. But the project was rejected by Yoshio Sakamoto. Being impressed by their love for the Metroid franchise and series and attention to detail, they were then moved to make Metroid Samus Returns and that's the end of it because now we're here and they're working on the next game after that so they obviously did a great job. It must be great having the creator of something you love give you compliments and hire you to work on the next project. What a dream. Other games that Mercury Stream has worked on is, you know, Castlevania Lord of Shadows, Castlevania Mirror of Fate, Castlevania Lord of Shadows 2, Space Lords, now Metroid Dread. Yeah. Their first game was American McGee Presents Scrapland, and then after that, Zombies. Maybe they were good. That actually helps lead me to the next point, which is Metroid Samus Returns. This game's release had a huge effect on the fan base, the creators, and just the conversation around Metroid. Because like I said earlier, Metroid Other M had already had a very detrimental conversation. The creators of Metroid kind of betrayed who she was, so we as the fans didn't know if we could trust the creators. But when Metroid Samus Returns came out, it reminded us that okay so these guys actually know what they're doing the franchise and not just trying to make it a money grab which federation forces anything it's proof that they were trying to make metroid and a quick profit scheme thing and they were trying to explore new stories that got away from samus aaron which nobody wanted they wanted samus aaron with the release of the game also came samus archives which was the music of Metroid, but remastered, redone, reorchestrated, and allowed to be heard from the fans. And I think that was a big thing because one thing I remember about Metroid the most, OST, the music. I think of the game and immediately I start hearing Grimstar or the ghost ship or initially landing in SR388. It was just a return to form for Metroid. It made the fans believe in the companies again. It made me believe in Nintendo again that they were going to do something good with this franchise because Samus Returns was such a good game. I really loved the remake. I played the heck out of it. It was kind of a fun game to like do over, you know, and it shows new powers of Samus that we hadn't seen before and they did it in a really simple easy way very consumable but yet challenging in fact it makes me want to talk about the dark themes of metroid and why people like metroid so let's do that the theme of metroid is very abandoned it's lonely it's ambient but out of nowhere it hits you so i like the aspect that it's like a horror game super metroid on the snes was legendary because of the environment, you were on an alien planet. Honestly, it was kind of inspired by Aliens, where it had Ripley in a giant spacesuit fighting aliens. <laughs> Ironically, Samus in a giant spacesuit fighting aliens. Just look at this evolution chart, and you tell me what you think about aliens and Metroids. It also focuses on connection, like 
every game in the series has this kind of quirk where like you're connected with a DNA genome or you're connected with this one Metroid and you're trying to save them or you're just in relation to this species and you either have to wipe them out or you can help them and I think that kind of brings out a wholesome part because I remember in Super Metroid you save these little bird like beings and they fly out of the planet if you do save them when you go home it's like attention to detail which is another thing that people like it's like there's hidden nook and crannies in every corner and you are rewarded for exploring this whole world this whole planet it feels like a planet by the way because of the textures because of the creatures it makes sense they think about why the creatures are there and what they do and exist i remember when you go to the underground fortress in super metroid it's like there's these green giant hopping grasshopper type monsters and i was like it makes sense because it's kind of foresty but it's dry these guys probably eat like just dust particles and leaves and so i wasn't confused when it happened i just felt like i was in it i was in that world and metroid for most of it has never betrayed that you know they stay true to the roots world building is top notch i could go on and on and keep talking about the dark themes of metroid but there are so many I encourage you to look for yourself. And I'm sure maybe that's why you like Metroid too and while you're watching this video. You know, who knows? Maybe you don't know Metroid and you're just watching this video for fun, which welcome. I'm happy you're here. We're making new videos every week. Okay, so this is the tough conversation we have to have about Metroid because it's something that's been true since the very beginning. It's not Nintendo's biggest cash flow series, you know? If you look at the wiki, man, the amount of games that have sold are not that much. I mean, this is maybe like initial release, right? But there are a handful of Metroid games that have even crossed a million cells. All the Metroid Prime games, so of course they're gonna bring that back, right? Which Metroid Prime 4, which they actually didn't release, remember? It's similar to Dread. They wanted to remake it because Metroid Prime 4, that is, so that they could have a good game and they weren't happy with what it was because they know if they release something bad people will not forget it and it would just be a bad like mark on the whole series as a whole for years to come and they'll probably lose out money in the fan base and so they're trying to bring that back especially now when they should be making a lot of money with this game i'm actually astounded right now that the first metroid game came out and only sold 2.7 million copies that's crazy yo that's like not that much metroid prime released and only got 2 million sales our boy sonic sells more than metroid <laughs> i mean we do see sonic more unfortunately and let's be honest samus isn't the head logo or iconic character for Nintendo, but I didn't know it was this bad. And it kind of shows you why it took so long from Metroid Other M that released in 2010 till 2021 for this Metroid Dread to come out. It's lucky that Metroid Samus Returns even got positive press because honestly, Samus, even Metroid Samus Returns didn't get a million sales. So they know they can't mess up. And actually, luckily, I, I looked on a website blog on GameStop today and it said that GameStop has the most pre-orders for Metroid than any other game out right now in its history for like the past years. So I, I'm surprised about that and I'm happy about it. That's what everything's going to end up on. Like if Metroid Dread sells well, if you buy it, if I buy it, if we all get this game and we enjoy the series, there's a chance that Nintendo is going to bring Metroid back as much passion as they can and make good games for this series it really is up to the audience and when we don't buy we let them know that like we don't care and they just need to put their time to something else a new ip or something which is not true okay i bought metroid samus returns and i'm gonna buy metroid dread just for that reason i want nintendo to know that i want more metroid games you know and there's nothing quite like a metroid game and that's why metroid dread is probably the rise again of this whole franchise you know and i'm excited for the future even with these trailers coming out like it looks so good you can see the attention to detail and the music is all there it's like original ost stuff but just remade and mastered uh, maybe a slightly different but i love that old music it's a must buy if you're a metroid fan i think that's where i want to end it you know subscribe like comment hit that bell button you know patreon discord join our groups we talk about nerdy stuff but otherwise like you guys have a great day hey man metroid dread it's coming out who would have thought it surprised me.